You just found the home of your dreams. You're so excited and you can't wait to write an offer on a property. Let's slow your roll though. You gotta make sure you understand what you're doing when you're writing an offer. I'm Dan Larson, Realtor. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I have a full series talking about all the things first time home buyers need to do to get to this point. Now to officially write an offer, you fill out, at least in the state of Pennsylvania, you have to fill out a form called the Standard Agreement for the Sale of Real Estate. Boring name, I call it AOS, Agreement of Sale. To fill out the AOS or the Agreement of Sale, you have to have certain details figured out ahead of time. And they can be negotiated, changed later on, but you have to have these details figured out in writing an offer. One, the purchase price. Kind of a big deal, right? Second, initial deposit amount. You can pause this video, click the playlist, go watch that video, and then come back to this one. Three, you wanna know when your settlement date is. The settlement date has to be Monday through Friday, so keep that in mind. All right, do you guys do four this way? I feel like that's weird. You kind of do four this way. But four is which inspections you want to elect and waive. Now, this is the longest video I've made so far talking about that, the inspections, because it's very important to understand the inspections and which one you're going to elect because the seller has to agree to it. And then you have to pay for these inspections to get done. Five, your mortgage information. You already should have been pre-approved a long time ago but understanding how much of a down payment you need, what's the loan amount, what's the interest rate. When you're looking at a listing, most likely, if you can't see it, the buyer's agent can see it, of what's already included and excluded in terms of personal property within the home. There's a long section talking about all the things that are already included. However, the three most important are refrigerator, washer, and dryer. Understanding if those are included or excluded is important to understand, you know, your total moving costs because you will probably need a refrigerator, washer, or dryer if you don't have one already. Those are six important aspects that you need to figure out as the buyer that the buyer's agent will put into the offer. Now, the agreement of sale document is 14 pages long in the state of Pennsylvania. Part of the reason why it's so long is, one, it's very important. It's kind of a big deal. You're buying a house. So you want to make sure you have all the protections and all the understanding. The second part why it's so long is because it's a standard form that is supposed to be used for every individual property sale within the state of Pennsylvania. Not every aspect that's in the agreement of sale is a part of this home. Like you probably don't have a greenhouse on the property. If you do, great. There's a section for that. If it doesn't have an HOA, there's a whole section that talks about that. When an offer is written, your buyer's agent is actually the one writing the offer for you. They've been trained to do this. They know how to do it. They will put that information into the offer and then they will send it to you to sign either electronically or in person. Make sure you take the time to read through that. If you have questions, ask them. You took the time to read it over. You understand and you signed it either in person on pen and paper or electronically and you send it back to the buyer's agent. That's not the only document you need when you're writing an offer. Yeah, there are a few more documents. One is called the seller's property disclosure statement. All you have to do for that is you have to acknowledge that you've read it. And how do you do that? You just initial at the bottom of each page and sign at the very last page and date it. So that's pretty easy. And you want to make sure before writing an offer, you read through that carefully, understanding all the aspects of the home. You need a pre-approval and for my company, at least, you need a signed estimated cost will be for purchasing the home. If the house was built before 1978, the sellers have to fill out a document called residential lead-based paint hazards warning or something like that. It's a, I just call it lead-based paint disclosure. Sellers have to fill that out. Buyers have to initial and sign it as well. Whether they know of any lead-based paint or if they don't, they have to give that disclosure out and you have to sign it as well. There's another document called the deposit money notice that you need to have signed as well. Talking about the escrow and initial deposit and the understanding for it. At a minimum, those are four documents that you need. There are potentially other documents as well, depending on what type of offer you're writing. One thing that you'll notice when an offer is sent over to you, there's going to be a lot of blank marks. In parentheses, you'll see unless otherwise stated. So it's basically we're going off what the standard is, and if it's to change, then we write something in. So if those people off the first time they see it, they're like, there's so many blank spots, like what's going on? No, it's okay. 
unless otherwise stated. So whatever it says before that, that's just what we're going with. One example right here is talking about the transfer tax. So if, if you don't know already, the transfer tax in Pennsylvania for a majority of points, you wanna to check to see if this house is different, but for a majority of it, it is 2% transfer tax for the sale of any property. That 2% is split evenly between the buyer and the seller. So really, buyers are only paying 1% transfer tax. However, if you wanted to increase your value of an offer, you'd say, I'll pay the additional percent to make our offer more attractive. You would then write in because it's different from the norm of it being split 1%, 1%, you're gonna write in, buyer is going to cover the full transfer tax amount. Once your offer is sent over to the listing agent and the sellers, if they like your offer, they will sign the agreement of sale. And once that is signed by the sellers, you are now officially under contract, which means you are taking the next steps to make the home you love so much your official home. If you comment below, I can send you a blank copy of what the agreement of sale looks like. That way you can take time to look through the document for yourself when it's not filled out. If you guys have any other questions about this process, drop them in the comments. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Dan Larson, Realtor out. I appreciate you. I don't know why I saluted. I, I, I don't know. I just do that. But yeah, thanks for watching.